Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Today we have got a massively concerning the Ryzen 5 3600 CPU from a review outlet which actually leaked stuff on the Ryzen 2000 series just a year ago and those numbers ended up being accurate. It appears that this person is maybe purchasing them for, through some back channels and getting access to some of these parts even before reviewers have them in hands. These parts are not meant to be coming out until July 7th and you could probably expect to see reviews around that point of time. But this is about a full week and a half, maybe even two weeks before reviews are actually meant to go live. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at all the numbers. He's got benchmarks, temperatures, all that good stuff. So we'll just dive right into it. But first, today's video is brought to you by LevelGo.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for under $16, Microsoft Office 2016 Professional Plus for under $40, and Microsoft Office 2019 for under $80. And if you use my code JSL22 at checkout, you can get 22% off of Windows 10, or use the code JSL16 to get 16% off of any software over on levelgo.com when you use the links down in the description below. So the early review in question comes from the website El Chapuzas Informatico, which is a Spanish website or maybe Portuguese, I, I, I don't know, I think it's Spanish. We'll just go, we'll just, it's, we'll just assume it's some, something like that, okay? Um, but yeah, he's got his hands on the Ryzen 5 3600, unfortunately that's the only uh, Ryzen 3000 series CPU that he does have his hands on that we can take a look at here with the benchmarks and there are some caveats with this testing here so, um, for starters he does not have an x570 motherboard but he was running on the latest BIOS for the x470 motherboard which he was using for his testing so that does give you full support for the Ryzen 3000 series but obviously with x570 we might see some performance improvements maybe a little bit better memory compatibilities as he does mention in his review that there was some memory incompatibility but he was still able to get 16 gigabytes of DDR4 working at 3200 megahertz, which is really, you know, kind of like the baseline of where you want to be in terms of running along with any AM4 CPU. So you can see the specs up here on the Ryzen 5 3600, which we already know, but, you know, just to recap, six cores, 12 threads, base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz, turbo frequency of 4.2 gigahertz. So that is what he was using for his testing, and we can definitely get some good information based on that. As you can see, we've got an image of the processor here, although he did blur it out probably to hide um, things like the serial number and the part number because that could be used to kind of trace, if AMD were to find out that those numbers, um, he, they could use that to trace the origin of the CPU and then they could probably get someone along the line here in trouble, probably not El Chapuzas because he probably did not get this part from AMD, especially based on the leaks that he put out last year. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he got this through back channels in some way that he was not supposed to acquire it. Um, you can see we also have got the CPU Z. Uh, screenshot here where we can see the Ryzen 5 3600 with the core speed running at 4.2 gigahertz assumingly that's on uh, single core not all core but when we take a look at single core performance we could definitely learn a lot from that we could see the pin layout in the back sort of although it looks like the lens was smeared with Vaseline again he's blurring it for whatever reason not really sure what information we could glean from that you know otherwise but I, chose, best, I guess he chose to blur it out either way. Uh, as you can see here, we've got the processor socketed in. He said he was using the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7, Gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard, along with G-Scale Flare X DDR4 at 3200 megahertz and an NVIDIA 20, RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition for all of his testing. And if we come down here now to some of the first tests, the synthetic tests, which we can really use for a good comparison with other CPUs, although his selection of CPUs is uh, kind of questionable at best, but I guess he's just testing based on what he has. He's not, this is not a massive review outlet, so he probably doesn't have access to every single CPU ever released. But, you know, we've got enough here to kind of compare against. Although it is kind of odd, that, like he did like multi-threaded on Cinevege R15 against a lot more processors, but then like on, on single-threaded, it only shows a few processors where we could have gotten a much um, better picture of the generation scaling between Ryzen 2000 and 3000 if he had included things like the Ryzen 5 2600 in his single-threaded testing, but he only put it in the multi-threaded testing, and you can see it scored a, got a score of 1561. Uh, on the multi-threaded and that is trailing behind the 2700X as you would expect that is an 8-core 16-thread um, but you know it 
it does actually pull slightly ahead of the first generation Ryzen 1700X, so there's definitely something to be said uh, for that, and it does appear to be faster than the i7-8700K, so it's actually doing pretty decent there. Um, looking at single-threaded, we could see that it got a score of 196 compared to the 9900K, which got a score of 204, so it does appear that, in, that AMD is still going to be slower on the single-core compared to what Intel is currently offering if these numbers do hold up to be true and of course again you know he's using a last generation motherboard so that could certainly be a contributing factor um, but also we can see that this is running at 196 compared to the 2700x which got a score of 176 so that is roughly an 11 and a half percent increase in performance now of course this is a six core and that's a that's a that's an eight core on the 2700x but that really doesn't matter in terms of single core performance so really what we're seeing there is it about like i said 11 and a half percent performance improvement on single core between ryzen 2000 and ryzen 3000 and amd was advertising that these would be up to 15 percent ipc increase so this is kind of right in that ballpark at 11.5 percent and i think when we take other things into account, maybe if we were on an X570 motherboard, um, you know, if we were running uh, maybe a little bit faster RAM than what he was able to get running on his test setup. And then also the fact that the Ryzen 2700X does have a slightly higher boost clock than the 3600. The 3600, if you remember, has a boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz and the 2700X has a boost clock of 4.3 gigahertz. So on a single core test, both of these, car these CPUs, I should say, are very likely running at that boost clock, you know, straight out pretty much, just running on 4.2 or 4.3 respectively. So the 2700X is a little bit higher there. So if we were to account for that and drop it down to 4.2 gigahertz on the single core, we would probably see that score come down a little bit and then we would close the gap a little bit there, getting closer to that 15% uplift that AMD was promising. Coming down here, we do also have some gaming performance benchmarks that he did post here. And he did mention that this was running at full HD Ultra, so that's going to be 1080p Ultra settings along with that 2080 Ti. Not really the best scenario for testing a CPU, honestly. You usually want to go ahead and lower down the settings and try to isolate the CPU rather than being GPU bottlenecked, which is kind of really what he's doing here. Um, but we can see that the 9900K pretty much wins. It, do, it, it does. It wins across the board. The 9900K is just still a faster processor. For gaming, going by these numbers only here, we could see in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the 9900K got an average of 86 FPS, while the 3600 got an average of 80, but the 9900K does have more cores and more threads. It's also, you know, it seems like, based on the, the numbers we just looked at, that it does, it's faster in terms of single core, so you would really expect to see that. Something like Far Cry 5 seems to be much bigger gap there at 145 versus 117, Final Fantasy 15 at 144.3 versus 134. And rounding out a list of his gaming benchmarks was Total War Warhammer 2, which is a very CPU-intensive benchmark, getting an average of 149.4 on the 9900K versus the uh, Ryzen 3600 at 142.7. He also does include some temperature testing numbers here. He does say that it was running at 40 degrees Celsius idle and around 75 degrees Celsius in a stress test, and he was actually using the stock heatsink that comes along with the Ryzen 5 3600 so those are actually pretty respectable numbers in terms of temperature and he does mention that this was about five degrees celsius below the previous generation in the same stress test with a i assume also a reference cooler so really i think the big takeaway from this is that you know ryzen's uh, zen 2 seems to be living up to what amd promised it as it's running about a 10 to 15 percent uplift on single core performance versus the previous generation power consumption and temperatures all seem good gaming performance is definitely very good although it's probably still going to lose to the 9900k in most games i think we kind of you know expected that but the price to performance you really can't you know argue with compared to the 9900k which is a 500 dollars processor versus these that are going to be around like 2 to 250 and then of course we're going to have 12 cores we're going to have 16 cores which are going to be absolute monsters for their price for multi-threaded workloads so ryzen is still kind of fitting that price to performance bill is it going to be the fastest gaming cpu on the market probably not but you'll be able to get one of these higher core count ones if you do want to do multi-threaded workloads at a much more affordable price than what Intel offers. And I think that's kind of what Ryzen has been doing the best, um, you know, over the past few years is giving us those higher core counts at a more affordable price, which helps out a lot of people. Some people don't really care. Um, you know, some people that just want to play games, there's really no reason to go out and buy more than a six core, but it makes it affordable. And then you could still, you could stream, game, whatever, 
So I'm still excited to see these processors and get my hands on with it and test them to uh, validate these numbers and also give you guys data on the other processors which we have not seen tested here today. Like I said, the 12 core, eventually the 16 core later on down the road. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Was Are these numbers a disappointment to you? Are they a letdown or are they better than you expected or basically just on par? For me, they're about on par with what I expected to see. And it doesn't appear that AMD was kind of like hiding anything or, you know, overselling these processors. They said 15% uplift and we saw it around 11.5% uplift on the previous generation. But again, that was running against a processor with a slightly faster uh, boost clock and also running on an X470 board. So X570 might make a little bit of a difference there possibly, but we will just have to wait and see once uh, we can po finally post reviews for you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know as soon as we have something for you guys on that. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Please let me leave me your thoughts and everything down in the comments below. And as always, I appreciate you guys liking, commenting, and subscribing for more videos like this one. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Ciao.